on to the plug and now plug down with Lady Blackface. What it do, y'all? Okay. Now, you, did you have a hard time growing up in Baltimore? Um, yeah, uh, it's pretty hard. A lot of the things uh, it went through from molestation from family to a lot of physical abuse, teasing from children, made me angry, made me bitter. So, it was, it was kind of hard for me to really grow up in the city. And then you have that family law that goes on in the family, stays in the family. That really put a crutch on everything. Like, it really shut it down. And you had, um, when you were younger, you participated in the Charlie Gonza program? Yeah, in the fifth grade, I went to Hartford Heights Elementary School. And during this time, they ran this campaign, Turn Your Guns In, where they, they was actually doing, anyone can turn their guns in, and you wouldn't get consequented. So they did like a big um, artistic thing, and I wrote a rap. I still remember it, but my first rap ever written in the fifth grade. Uh, did you want me to say it for the people, or just leave it there? Um, Bang, 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 hear the guns ring. Next thing you know, you hear the church bells ring. A kid asks his mother, why do you cry? Your father got shot and he'll surely die. If there's a drive-by shooting after all, someone gets shot there after all. Innocent kids getting hit by guns while they're outside trying to have fun. Little children getting caught in the crossfire. Next thing you hear is a church choir. So be a hero, turn your guns in, give God the glory, and we can all win. That was fifth grade, first rap battle. You can remember that long ago. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's because it was the start. It was the beginning. I realized then that this is what I want to do. Okay, this one. All right, now you're related to another Baltimore artist, uh, Westside Certified, Valley Smalls. Yeah. Now, what influence did he have on your rap career? Um, Valley is the youngest um, out of his siblings, just like me. And sometimes when you're the youngest, it don't seem like you're getting all the attention that everybody else get. But Veli has a flow that's sick. And with Veli, he, anything he says, you can relate to. It's not a whole bunch of commercial music. It's more of, this is how I'm feeling. And when, you, when he raps, you feel it. So a lot of my music, I want people to feel. I don't want it to be something you just rock into. I want it to be something that when you hear it, oh, okay, I, I went through that. You know, I want you to know, yeah, some, she lost somebody, or yeah, she's mad about this. When you hear it, I want you to feel exactly what I'm going through at that moment. And that's what Veli does. Veli lets you know exactly what he's feeling, and you feel it in every song he does. So who inspired you most? Um, I'm going to say Veli Smalls and Six Cassiano. Six Cassiano um, makes these major beats. He can rap himself, but for the most part, he's, in, he's inspirational. He basically told me, you know, get out that shell. Stop worrying about what they think because you can do what you do. Do what you do and let the rest fall in place. So my first 12 songs that I ever did are on all of his beats. From Corner Boys to Queen of the Streets to even Nicki Minaj, Pop Pop Bitch, Did Your Ass Just Pop. Because yeah, Nicki, that's how I feel about her. But we're going to just put it out there. Um, six, I mean, I go in there, I tell him what I want and he can do it. The man can make a beat out of anything. Uh, we having our little issues right now, but we family. I mean, real relatives. So I'm hoping that one day we can get past that and get back to work. Mm -hmm. Now, what female rappers do you admire? Movie. I love movie. Um, pretty bitches with balls. Like yeah. just hand that makes me like, yeah, I want to be one of them. So movie. Um, I just recently had the pleasure of meeting Lady Heron. Of course, here's that. We're gonna go ahead and put that out there. I mean, I just, personally, I like all females in Baltimore because nowadays, as females, we coming stronger. And the guys don't really take us seriously. So when we get up there and we can hold our ground, I'm, I rock for any Baltimore female artist. And I always say, if it's something that I'm not doing correctly, please feel free to, you know, help me out. And if I see something I'm like, I'm going to tell you. I'm not good at holding things in, so you'll hear it eventually. So. I'm going to have to put that on my to-do list to start a female rapping union. Yes, <laughs> yes. I mean, they say the girl's caddy, but it's not really the girls being caddy. It's when we put that male testosterone in there, you know what I mean? When there's a guy involved, that's when women usually be. You can keep the men out the room, I think we can get women together. And it's, it's a beautiful thing. I think putting women like DGK, Movie, Kia, um, me, I mean, if you put all of us on one CD, I bet you that CD sells just as good as the West Side Certified and East Side Certified. I think you just need that female hit because the styles are all different. It's 
they're all different. No matter what you hear the ladies doing, they're all different. And I feel like Baltimore can do it. Let the ladies step us up. You know what I mean? I feel like the guys should step back because, number one, we're going to keep it real. Sex appeal is what's going to get the guys spending money. You know, most guys don't want to help the next person. Baltimore is a crab city. I have a song called Crabs. We pull each other down. But one thing we all know, booty and cash will pull a guy out the room. <laughs> so you put a whole bunch of women, hot women, who can flow out there, that city is bound to sell. You just have to get it done. You know, that a lot of people say, well, I'm going to do that and I'm going to do this for women. Let's get it done. I mean, move. Movies say pretty bitches with balls. Let's get them marching. <laughs> Shout out to movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you currently just stopped smoking marijuana. Now, have you noticed a change in your thinking since you stopped? I'm not as hostile. Right. I'm not as hostile at all. Um. Uh. Ooh. Uh. With the weed, it's more. If I didn't have it, I was angry. I had what you would consider a crack habit to marijuana. My habit was $150 a day. So, I smoke big. I smoke real big, and if I didn't have it, somebody was going to fight. we going to fight. So I had to do what was right for me, my family, my career. I had to quit. And with that, I've calmed down. I have, I'm not angry because I don't have it. I do go through urges, which that's how they tell you that's the addict in you. I wake up, I'm mad. I want to hit a blunt. But now instead of reaching for a blunt, I reach for my black mind or Pepsi. So that's my new habit. Um, so I'm, I think it just calmed me down. Whereas we used to be the thing that calmed me down. Them to there is not it's not a picture. I'm just more calm. Right. More so how long have you left it? It has been a long July the eleventh <laughs> to be exact. So on the eleventh of August it'll be that thirty day flush that they talk about. So on August eleventh, my birthday is August the ninth. So I originally said I quit drinking, I quit smoking. I didn't want any type of mind altering substances in my body, so that I can stay focused. Now, I'm going to keep it a 1,000. I'm going to be 29 this Thursday, so I'm going to hit five with Ciroc Berry on deck, you know, and if you got it, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, I do plan on drinking, um, but then I think I'm going to fall right back in place if I can, you know, with God's help, of course. All right. You've worked with Stanley Frank with uh, 10 Cargo Productions. Now, tell me about your business relationship with him. Um, I met Mr. Frank a little over a year ago when I did the Baltimore Apollo, they had the Baltimore Apollo here, and last minute I need to have a show CD. So a friend of mine, Donnell Carter, who is a, who sung with the Temptations, he took me to Mr. Frank and he did my show CD. So Mr. Frank listened, he's like, oh, I want to work with you. And we started, you know, doing recordings. Because of his career, the way his music is, we clashed a lot because I'm a rap artist and they're old school, so we had a lot of problems. He wanted my music to sound this way and I wanted it to sound that way. Um, but we kind of found a medium around where he'd add his music as my hooks and I would rap for the song. The biggest issue, lately I signed the contract with this man and the contract is one-sided. So he basically took from me and so I no longer have any ties with Mr. Stanley Frank. You have a secret crush now. Would you like to reveal who that secret crush is? Um, I'm not going to put no names out there. I'm going to let y'all know he on fire. <laughs> So if you know that, then you know who he is. You got anything else you want to plug in? Yeah, y'all know it's Lady B. I'm trying to have y'all know. Find me on Facebook, Lady B, or Arca trying to get right Haley, because definitely I'm trying to get my life right. I'm on Twitter, Lady Blackface. And for those of you who don't know, Blackface is a derogatory name, a racial slur. So when you look at Lady Blackface, I'm trying to bring up that name. I'm trying to bring it out that even bad things can become something good. So we just got plugged in. Mm -hmm. And there you have it, you've just been plugged in, Lady Blackface. <laughs>